It seems like all processed foods are terrible, but might they actually be saving your life? When talking processed foods, my mind immediately jumps to pastries, ready-to-eat frozen meals, and soda pops. But that's only part of the picture. Processed foods are actually really anything that's been altered or modified from its original state. Think of how many food items have salts or sugar added, or have been smoked, cooked, packaged, or canned in preservatives. These are all considered processed. Basically, if it's not a whole apple or just a plain nut, it's probably processed. So clearly, if the definition of processed is this broad, processing isn't always bad for you. In fact, processing can make food safer. Pasteurization, for example, kills harmful bacteria in milk and juice, which makes them safer for consumption. Freezing counts as processing too. And in addition to fighting bacterial growth, it actually helps foods preserve their nutrients. This is all why some scientists decided it didn't make sense to lump all processed foods together. Doing so muddles results in studies and, as a consequence, allows big food companies to make claims that are in their best interest. So, scientists have separated out the real villains under the term ultra-processed. Carlos Augusto Monteiro, leading researcher at the Center for Epidemiological Studies and Health and Nutrition at the University of Sao Paulo, defines ultra-processed as foods that fall into the ready-to-eat and ready-to-heat category. Think of an aluminum-wrapped energy bar or burger at a junk food joint. He explains that these foods are made up of multiple minimally processed foods, and they're typically processed further through baking or frying. They have more additives, they're packaged or canned, and they have more added salt, sugar, vitamins, minerals, actually a lot more. A typical ultra-processed meal contains 33% more sugar and 25% more salt and fat than a meal comprised of natural and minimally processed foods. You probably already know why these foods and what's in them are bad for you. Sugar is linked to obesity, diabetes, and artificial sugars are linked to cancer, weight gain, and mess with your metabolism. Added fats, especially trans fats, are linked to coronary heart disease. And you may also know that processes like refining carbohydrates can lead to overeating and insulin spikes. But ultra-processed foods also contain less of important things like fiber, which is a problem because besides decreasing your risk of diabetes and aiding in digestion, fiber helps you feel full, not enough fiber, and you're more likely to overeat. Add to this that ultra-processed foods are more energy dense, and it means that on top of eating more calories, you're eating the wrong kind. And this matters because consumption of ultra-processed food is increasing, and these foods are replacing other less processed foods in the U.S. and abroad. While lots of processed foods are good for you, no ultra-processed food is healthful. Now, this doesn't mean we shouldn't ever eat pizza, but it does mean we should be vigilant about quantity and quality when making food choices as a whole. Do you love bacon? Well, Trace has a rundown on processed meats in this episode. Check it out. As meat cooks, the chemicals found inside of them can form heterocyclic amines, or HCAs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, and advanced glycation end products, AGEs. These compounds are fine on their own, but when we eat them, they break down and mess with our colonic DNA, causing colorectal cancer. How often do you eat ultra-processed foods? Is there something holding you back from choosing whole foods? Convenience and cost were two huge ones for me when I was in college. Let us know in the comments below and remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode of D News. Thanks for watching, guys.